Welcome to Coding Commanders. I'm Commander Candy, and today is a very exciting day. We're going to learn all about asynchronous programming and how it differs from synchronous code. Node.js is a server-side JavaScript framework, and JavaScript is asynchronous by nature. So if we want to build some killer Node.js apps, it's going to be really important that we fully understand the concept and implications of asynchronous programming. Node.js, asynchronous programming. You'll find documentation and homework at codingcommanders.com slash Node.js. Let's just cut straight to the chase and talk about asynchronous versus synchronous programming. When code executes, that code sends out a request. It's requesting whatever the result is of the code's execution. Then a response is sent back containing that result. Say we have a code statement. That code statement is console log get result. Console log is a JavaScript function that will print results to the terminal. Get result is a function that's going to return get me. So when this statement gets fired off, it's going to send out a request. It's going to receive back the response, get me, and then it'll print it to the terminal. With synchronous code, it's going to go through the statements and fire them off in an orderly fashion, executing code one, code two, code three, and so on. When asynchronous code executes, it sends out a request. Then it waits. It waits for the response to come back, and when it gets that response, it handles it and moves on to the next code statement. In contrast, asynchronous code, it doesn't wait. It's going to go ahead in an orderly fashion, firing off our code statements, sending off requests, but it's not going to wait for a response to come back before moving on to the next request. It's just going to keep on sending out requests and whenever the responses come back well it'll handle it then to better illustrate the differences between asynchronous and synchronous code i'm going to use an analogy asynchronous versus synchronous dating first let's meet johnny johnny was invited to a friday night party and would like to bring a date he executes synchronously what's his probability of success because Johnny is a synchronous dater, he's going to go ahead, he's going to text the first girl, do you want to go to a party on Friday night? And then he's going to wait for her response. And when Mary texts back and says no, he's going to go on and he's going to text Sue. Sue's like, nah. So then he's going to go ahead and he's going to text Miranda. Now Miranda, she was fast asleep because she works late and by the time he got to her, she didn't have time to respond. She did like him, but um, he did not get a date for the party because she was not able to respond in time, but he did get a date with her later on and they're pretty happy right now. Now let's meet Marcos. Marcos is an asynchronous dater. He also has a party on Friday night and would like to bring a date. So he's going to go ahead, he's going to text Betty, he's going to text Sally, he's going to text Michelle, and he's just going to go on and he's going to just keep texting people, right? Until somebody finally responds and says, yes, he sent out so many texts. Yes, of course, he did get a date for Friday night. Woo! He got the task done on time that the synchronous dater could not. But there's a problem. Julie. You see Julie? He really liked this girl. And you know, he was thinking, oh, a girl like Julie, she could never want to go out with me. So he kind of procrastinated a little bit on calling her. And he had called so many people that by the time she got the message, guess what? She actually did like him and she got all excited and she was about to respond back. But before she got a chance to respond, she found out that a coworker of hers had already responded and said yes and had that date with Marcos for the Friday party. Now Julie thinks Marcos is a total jerk and will never speak to him again. 
the asynchronous dater, was able to get the task done on time. He got his date to the Friday party. However, in the process, he crashed the application of his love life. On the other hand, the synchronous dater, he didn't get the Friday night party, but his love life is still alive and well with Miranda. But don't give up on asynchronous dating yet because Marcos could have done things a little bit differently, had gotten his date to the Friday party, and also had a date with Julie. Let's look at how. Marcos could have used a callback. In this example, call Julie is a function of the text message, would you like to go to a party with me on Friday night? Julie's phone number and a callback. If Julie responds and says yes, the code's done. But if she says no, it's gonna go ahead and execute this callback to call all the other girls. Because with asynchronous code, it doesn't wait. Regular JavaScript expressions, say bar x equals three plus two, or bar y equals a function to display a div, those are gonna evaluate really quickly. Boom, boom, boom. But if we have to go outside of our JavaScript, say we have to call to another server, we have to call to the database, we have to read a file, anytime we gotta go outside our little area, it's gonna take a lot more time. Several regular JavaScript expressions can be evaluated and the time it takes to do one database call. Synchronous code, it doesn't wait which is a good thing when we're dealing with things like database queries, reading files, because these kind of functions are really slow. And so we don't want regular JavaScript expressions to have to wait on them if they don't have to. When we're dealing with asynchronous code, we have to pay extra attention to any code that that particular line might be dependent on. To do so, we use things such as callbacks, promises, and a sync away. A couple weeks ago, I got to go to Node Summit and I had an awesome time. I learned a lot and I want to share a little bit about what I learned with you. I watched a panel moderated by Tracy Lee and one of the members on that panel was James Snell. There was other awesome developers. I'll link in the video description as well. And what the panel was about was using Node.js with front-end JavaScript frameworks. And throughout it, a lot of the problems that they were addressing had to do with conflicts due to all the dependencies that people tend to use with their Node.js code. After the panel, I had the awesome opportunity to speak with James Snell and I asked him, I told him that when I write in Node.js, I tend to limit the dependencies I use as much as possible and asked him his opinion. He said that you should write your code as vanilla as possible and limit your includes, your npm installs. He said that when he writes his Node.js, now this is a maker of Node.js, remember, like the definition of an expert, the only outside include that he usually uses is sometimes he'll use CLI to do a command line program, but he doesn't even use Express. And I did tell him that I use Express, and he said that's okay. He's not saying it's bad to use Express, but his advice was to use as few dependencies as possible. I tend to write a lot of vanilla JavaScript anyway. Uh, most of my logic in Node.js is written in vanilla JavaScript, and I do try to stay as vanilla Node.js as I can. Like I said, I do use Express, and I also use like Express Validation. Um, sometimes I use CLI. There's things that I include, but I try to keep it as dependency-free as possible. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to writing vanilla code. With JavaScript, one that I hear all the time is, you're going to get into callback hell. Callback hell, it might be a catchy name, but it doesn't mean that callbacks are evil. Um, I, since I do write a lot of vanilla JavaScript and I do use callbacks, I oftentimes have people coming up to me and they're like, your code looks real good, but you're going to get into callback hell. Callback hell is an ecstatic thing because if you write it out without factoring out any code, you'll have a function within a function within a function and a lot of people 
don't like the aesthetic appearance of that. The alternatives to callbacks tend to be libraries that execute the callbacks, but just put a prettier hood on it, make it look more user-friendly. But you can do that without including additional libraries if you factor out your code, create your own libraries, build your own modules, and you can call the functions from your own libraries the same as you can call code from another library. And then you know exactly how it works and you can make sure that it does not conflict with anything else that you use in your applications. Creating your own libraries instead of relying on dependencies will also give you more power and control over your application. You don't have to worry about what the framework or the library wants you to do. You can just do what's best for your application. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure to comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. I do check up on the comments. I will get to you. Also, don't forget to go to my website, codingcommanders.com slash Node.js. There you'll find all kinds of Node.js documentation, lessons, homework assignments. Everything you need is right there. Also, don't forget to check out my awesome t-shirt shop. I have all kinds of men's, ladies, unisex coding and mathematics tees, a couple mugs too. Check it out. Thank you again for watching my video and until next time, happy coding.